Welcome to the Academy, a series focused on the basics of Star Wars The Old Republic. PvP is Star Wars The Old Republic's player versus player mode, a type of quest where you team up with other players and fight the other team for points and objectives. PvP can be a lot of fun, and every match is a little different. You can start PvPing at level 10. You can also queue up with friends in a group of up to four people. The PvP matchmaker will put you in a matchmaking bracket with players of a similar level. That means if you're low level, you'll never get matched up with someone who is max level. The current Knights of the Fallen Empire brackets are levels 10 through 40, known as low beefs, 41 through 64, known as mid beefs, and endgame PvP at level 65. If you're still leveling, you don't have to worry too much about gear because you'll be bolstered once you enter a PvP match. One thing you can do to help yourself in PvP while leveling is to at least get a piece of gear in every slot. Empty slots will not be bolstered, and make sure an empty cosmetic gear you are wearing has a mod in every slot. If you're missing your earpiece, implants, or relics, you can pick up the Introduction to War Zones quest in the combat training section of the fleet for a free set. If you're missing any other pieces, like a helmet or bracers, buy some cheap ones off the GTN. Don't use an expertise crystal while leveling, it breaks the bolster and not in your favor. Bolster basically brings all your stats up to speed with everyone else in the warzone. If you're max level, it's extremely important to gear yourself up properly. PvP gear is special compared to the rest of the game. It has an extra stat called expertise, which helps you in player versus player fights. Your goal once you start getting into max level matches will be to earn gear with the expertise stat, so you can survive longer, heal better, and do more damage in PvP. PvP gear with expertise can be bought with Warzone Commendations from the vendors in the combat training section of the fleet. Warzone Commendations are earned through completing PvP Warzones and PvP daily and weekly quests. The mods within the gear should never be mixed. Keep your PvE gear and mods completely separate from your PvP gear, otherwise the bolster will not work well on your gear in Warzones. PvP gear and mods will always have the expertise stat on them. PvP offhands and main hands are missing crystals by default, so make sure to put an expertise crystal into any new PvP offhands or main hands you buy from the PvP vendors. There are two tiers of PvP gear. The first tier can be bought with just Warzone accommodations. The second must be bought with a combination of Warzone comms and the shell of the previous piece of gear. If you don't have any Warzone commendations yet, or have outdated PvP gear, there are other ways to boost your stats in Warzones. For a boost, you'll want to gear yourself up with less powerful, non-PvP gear. That way, the Warzone bolster will help you out a bit. If you have great PvE gear, you don't want to wear it in PvP, it will hurt you rather than help you. Good gear to wear if you don't have expertise gear is the level 162 armor earned from doing the solo versions of the Prelude to Shadow of Revit flashpoints, which include Assault on Tython, Korriban Incursion, Legacy of the Rakata, and the Depths of Manon flashpoints. You can also buy pieces from the level 55 vendor in the supply section of the fleet. Currently, any armor that is 190 rating or below works pretty good. The good news is that even if you can't get these bolster-friendly armors, or you don't feel like spending the time or the commendations to get them, is that PvP Warzone Commendations can be earned very fast. You just might be frustrated at how quickly you die the first few matches before you can buy some gear. Most players PvP while they're leveling, so they can buy a full set of PvP gear once they hit max level. It takes 4,075 Commendations to get a basic set, plus another 16,500 to get the advanced set. Before you step foot into PvP, you'll also want to get a very good idea of all your abilities and of your class. If you're playing as a tank, you'll want to know where your taunts, guard, and shields are. Tanks will constantly want to be taunting enemies that are attacking your teammates, and guarding teammates that are in trouble. Guard only works within 50 meters, so tanks need to be mindful about switching their guard when it stops working. If you like to attack other players, better known as DPS, you want to be familiar with your ability priority system, which means picking the abilities that will do the most damage at the time. If you don't know your ability priority well, go to Delphi.net and use the class guides drop down on the menu to find your class guide. The priority system is a little different than your ability rotation. The rotation is kind of an ideal situation thing that can only happen during boss fights. But in PvP, things are so scattered and chaotic, it's a lot better to know what abilities are best that can be used quickly because who knows when you're gonna die or when you're gonna have to stop and keep someone from capturing and know your rotation will get broken so easily in PvP. You'll also want to be familiar with which of your abilities you can use while moving and which you have to stay put for. 
Healers will want to know exactly what their different healing abilities do, whether they're single target or multi-target, and where their cleanse is. All players getting into PvP will also want to know where their emergency abilities are. Abilities that knock enemies away, stun enemies, let you run away fast, or heal or shield you. I highly recommend to open up your abilities list and read every ability so you know exactly what it does and keybind it if it seems useful. PvP matches themselves are a lot of fun. You'll get thrown into a team of either 4 or 8 and be pitted against enemy players in either a deathmatch or a match with special objectives to conquer or defend. To queue up for a match, press the Republic or Empire icon near your minimap, then press Q. This will put you in the PvP queue, and once enough people have queued up, it will start a match and teleport you into it. You only have a short time to accept a match, so don't walk away from your computer while you're queued. The first time you accept a match, look for a terminal where you load in and accept the PvP dailies and weekly quests. There's also one of these terminals available in the combat training section of the fleet. Completing these quests will net you extra Warzone commendations and a lot of XP if you're leveling. There's also a mechanic in Warzones that only exists in PvP. It's called Resolve, and it affects how much you or an enemy can be stunned. You can see your resolve bar circling around your character portrait. It's a black bar that will partially fill up every time you get stunned, pulled, or pushed. You can also see it pop up over characters' heads near their health bar if they are stunned, pulled, or pushed, and goes down over time. If someone, either you, a teammate, or an enemy is stunned, pulled, or pushed too many times, their white bar will fill up and they will be white barred. They will no longer be able to be stunned for a short period of time. Roots, which let a player attack but not move, and slows, do not fill up the resolve bar. A good time to use a stun in PvP is to finish off an enemy, for example, if they're very low on health. That way they can't heal themselves before you kill them. Another good time is if they're caught in an acid or a fire pit. Each type of Warzone match has a different location and different objectives. You can get a quick overview of the objectives on the loading screen before you load into a Warzone. PvP can be very intensive on your computer, especially in matches that have 16 players in them, so make sure to turn down your graphics enough that your computer won't stutter. While you're in your settings, you should also set your camera distance to 100% so you can see more of the map when you zoom out, and enable Focus Target. Focus Target lets you target an enemy or a teammate and always have their health bar and portrait on your screen even if they aren't nearby. That way you can keep an eye on them and see if they're in trouble. You want to enable all nameplates for friends and enemies. Enabling enemies helps you see them better when they are far away and enabling friends helps you call out quickly to specific people when you have questions. There are two types of PvP-only items, Warzone Medpacks and Warzone Adrenals. The Medpacks heal 30% of your health, and the Adrenals give you a 15% damage reduction. Use them in tight situations. There's also a more competitive version of PvP called Ranked PvP. Don't go into these types of matches until you have a fully completed set of PvP gear, have min-maxed and augmented your gear, and have gotten really good at playing your class in PvP. Once you're geared up for PvP and are familiar with your class, you can hop right in. Next on the Academy, we'll be covering all the different types of war zones and their objectives. If you want to show your support for this series, or to get notified when the next episode of the Academy comes out, subscribe to this channel.